Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear to all of you. Uh, today our topic is very simple. It's about what's happening uh, regarding what uh, uh, the person who people call him uh, Harun Yahya, which is a nickname for him, but his real name is Adnan Oktar. However, his real name is not really important for us. What is important is uh, what the news is reporting about uh, Adnan Oktar, and they are making fun of him, and I don't know why. Um, I could not really find a real reason to make fun of this guy regarding what he is saying, uh, because everything everything he is saying is absolutely accurate when it's come to the hijab. Uh, in interview with him, uh, Adnan Oktar, he said, bikini is Islamic veil. Uh, Turkish uh, televisionist or Oktar tells police. Now, I don't know why the Muslims are surprised about what Oktar he said when this is official and we can prove it easy that the whole purpose of the hijab is to cover certain part of the body, which is the vagina and the ass. Now, I'm sure some Muslims, they will say to you, this is absolutely false, this is not true. If we go in the Quran, you will not find really in the Quran uh, a clear verse speaking about covering your head or etc. The Quran is speaking about not to expose your uh, uh, breast out uh, for strangers and to hide your, uh, let us say, uh, uh, like, you know, decoration you put, jewelries, etc. in front of foreigners. But there is no place in the Quran speaking about covering the hair. And if we study the Quran about the chapter which is called the chapter of a hijab, we will find that this is chapter was or brought to Muhammad supposedly after Umar. He said to Muhammad that I saw the ass of your wife when she was doing poopoo. So the whole point of it, it was to cover the ass, not the hair. Uh, and I am sure, like Muslims, they will say this is not true. Now, this is Harun Yahya, and this is an, a news a website. It's called Horiyat Daily News, this very famous newspaper in Turkey. And here, the interview of Harun Yahya, which is very famous. He bring uh, uh, hookers to his show in order to make da'wah. And actually, this is very, very good way to bring Muslims to watch and listen to the Quran. Uh, because this is the same exact way Muhammad himself he practiced. What will make a Muslim join and do jihad? Prostitutes, hookers, blondigers. Muhammad, he said, attack the Roman and get the blondies. So why you blame uh, uh, Adnan Oktar or Harun Yahya uh, for saying what he is saying and for doing what he is doing? This is exactly what Muhammad he did. But Muhammad in his time, he didn't have the opportunity to bring the blonde girls, this guy, he have the blonde girls, those are the children of the children of the children of those people who the Muslims invade their countries and rape them, and then they have kids from them, they are blonde. Otherwise, the Turkish people are not blonde, and they are not blue eyes or uh, uh, yellow hair, etc. Those are people coming from the middle of Asia, and they are Asian. But if you look at the Turkish today, none of them look really like Asian, very little of, of what is left of the Asian. Why? Because they merge into the population and they force everybody to say he is a Turkish. If you look at those girls, what those to do have to have to, have to do with the Asian girls? Nothing. You know, those are not Turkish girls, those are not Asian girls, those are European. However, this guy he knew how important it is to bring such kind of women in order to get the attention of people, of believers. You see, the believers of Islam, they are believing in Allah more when they see such an ass or such a breast or such a, a body. If you, if, you, if you read with me here under the picture, it says, Oktar, also known as Harun Ihya, is seen in the file photo with his two of his kittens. So even the Muslims, they are calling the girls, they are going with him in his in his show, they are his kittens, you know, they are his, you know, I mean, why Muslims are surprised? Isn't it your God, he promised you a lot of vagina, a lot of virgins in the heaven? I mean, why the guy is a, is a bad person for you? Why, why, why you are trying to wash your hands from him when he is the one who introduced to Muslims what is called science in the Quran? 
You see my first book, if you read it, uh, The Deception of Allah, you will, think, you will see his name is mentioned there. And for sure, I mentioned the nickname he used, publishing what he called Quran and Science, Harun Yahya. And uh, uh, at that point, when I made my, my first book, the Muslims, they worship this guy. He got donation from everywhere. He is the hero. Actually, if you go and search in YouTube about him, you will find that this is the Dean Show. And this guy, his name Sheikh Yusuf State, who his wife used to call him, use this as he claimed. He is speaking highly about Harun Yahya, saying he is this is the high class writing we needed for this century. This is what I was waiting for. This is what I was dreaming about. You can read, you can watch the video. I'm not going to play it, so Muslims will not play or claim copyright of it. So the Muslims they spoke about him highly for years. Suddenly now, because Erdogan arrested him, you are washing your hands from him. So are you telling me six years ago, you do not know that this guy, he do parties and he bring girls live in his TV life. It's not, it's not something hiding. What he do is not hiding. Everybody knows what he do. So why now he is a shameful person for you and he was not a shameful person before? You Muslims are a bunch of hypocrites. Before you enjoy what he do, fabricating lies about what it's called science in the Quran. But now, everybody knows that this guy is a scam the same as Muhammad. Everything for him is about women, vagina, sex, and parties. And uh, and actually, Harun Yahya, he said something very truthful. He said the Quran said that wine is forbidden, but vodka is not. I challenged the Muslims to show me where it says it's forbidden, the vodka. Hmm? Where? He's right. He's not lying. You know, wine. Uh, look like Allah. He knows only when a drink, and this drink is the one make him angry. So Adnan Oktar, when he is being truthful, practicing what Islam is about, Muslims are upset. When Adnan Oktar lying about Islam, Muslims loves him. Why you are hypocrites? This is the truth about Islam. You see, when Adnan Oktar bring two girls wearing hijab, as you see in the front of us in the screen, and they have 10 kilograms of makeup, not even one of you spoke and opened his mouth. When Shabir Ali, he go on TV and he have a girl in front of him and she have 20 kilograms of makeup to the point you cannot see her face, nobody complain. Which is supposed to, according to you Muslims, it's haram. It's haram for a girl to show her makeup, right? It's haram for Muhammad even he said if a woman she wear a perfume and she walk in the front of men she is a whore just having perfume she is a, a whore and she committed adultery so the hypocrisy of the Muslims is amazing is the same story about what his name Nu'man Khan Nu'man Khan was is a hero for the Muslims he is bringing people to Islam brother he have lecturers and the guy is a scumbag he have no idea what Islam is about he say and he teach the most stupid things have nothing to do with Islam the Muslims they like him and then suddenly they found that he is posting naked pictures and he is dating many girls in the same time sleeping around and suddenly he is a bad guy, but he is practicing Islam. Isn't it lawful for a Muslim to have a date with four girls and sleep with them in the same time? It's lawful. So what? where he break the law of Islam? Tell me where. Nowhere. Muhammad, he have 13 women. So why Nu'man Khan and why Adnan Oktar cannot have 13 women to sleep with? Why Muslims did, did, don't get offended by Muhammad having unlimited numbers of women offering themselves for sex? Imagine yourself the Prophet Muhammad right now. And those women are coming to offer themselves for sex as the Quran says. If we go in the Quran, we will find the following. I'm just to show you, Adnan Oktar is a lot more decent than your Prophet Muhammad. If you go here, you will see it says, وَإِمْرَأَ وَهَبَتْ نَفْسَهَا لِلرَّسُولِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِي إِنَّا أَحْلَلْنَا لَكَ أَزْوَاجَكَ الَّتِي آتَيْتَ أُرْجُورَهُنَّ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ يَمِنُكَ مِمَّا أَفَاءَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ وَبَنَاتُ عَمِّكَ وَبَنَاتُ etc. Let us see a translation. Translation, chapter 33, verse number 50. You can read any stupid translation from those in the front of you. Choose one, the one you like. All right? Because they are stupid. 
Oh, Prophet, we have made love for, for you. Who? Wives. I mean, thank you very much, Allah. The guy, he is sleeping with them, and now you are telling him it is lawful for you to stay with your wives. Oh, let me tell you, I have a wife. I have 10 kids from her. Is it lawful for me to stay with her one day more? I mean, how stupid this verse is. But this verse is not about wives. The verse here, he want to introduce himself to the sex industry to make it lawful for him to have a license for a sexual relationship with all women, not only the wives. So he start with the wives and he end with women. They offer themselves to sleep with him. If you read with me, the daughters and the daughters and the daughters and the daughters and the daughters, and then look at this. And I believe in women, if she give herself into the prophet, she gave herself into the prophet. Any believing woman, she can give herself to the prophet. Adnan Oktar, he got a lot of women. They want to offer themselves to the prophet. Peace upon him, Adnan Oktar. What's your business? He have money, and because he have money, he can do so. He have the ability, and he have the qualification. He is powerful in bed, the same as the prophet. Some they say that Adnan Oktar can do forty women in the one night, as the prophet he can do. Maybe he can do what David can do according to Muhammad. He can do 99. So here we what we have is something very unique. And we need to remember that there's nothing really out of Islam. There's nothing here out of the line. So the hypocrites, when they want, they remember Muhammad. They remember Islam and they practice Islam. And when they want, they ignore Islam and they don't want to be part of religion. This guy, he practiced nothing out of the line. Nothing, you know, isn't it your religion who allowed you to do muta? Let us say Adnan Oktar, he want to follow Quran and he want to practice muta. What's your problem? Isn't it muta part of your religion? You want to say to me, like I saw the idiot uh, uh, in the text, he's saying, uh, uh, you know, hadith have to be uh, uh, like uh, in, in harmony with the Quran. This is false. All the Quran is not in harmony with the hadith. As an example, the muta. The Quran says you do muta. The Hadith says don't do muta no more. Harun Yahya is a person who follow Allah. He don't follow a man. Allah is the God, right? He is the only God. He is not a three gods. He is not four gods. He is one God. As if it's a big deal if you have one God or not. You have one God, but yet he allowed women to rent their vagina for one night stand. I mean, this is amazing God, isn't it? If he is a three gods, maybe he will not allow that. But because now he is one God, he allowed it. That's wonderful. So Adnan Oktar, he practiced Islam. He can rent vagina. What's your problem? Those women are not forced into sex with him. They are not forced into party. They are practicing their rights as Muslims. And now going about the bikini. Here he said that the women she have to cover herself only in the bikini area, as you see in the title of the news. Did he really teach something that Islamic? Absolutely not. If we go and see what is the reason for the chapter of hijab, we will find it was about the ass of Sauda. Umar ibn Khattab, he wait for the wives of Muhammad and he watch them when they are doing poo-poo. And when they do poo-poo, he make fun of them specifically. He was chasing the women. Her name is Sauda. So Umar, when Sauda, she went out to do poo-poo, Umar, he says, he called her saying, hey, we recognize you, Sauda. Recognize what? He saw her ass. Then Umar, he said, Allah, he sent the verses of uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, of hijab, as I said, it is Omar who said that Omar he went to Muhammad and he told Muhammad, Hey, Muhammad, come on, tell your wife to cover their ass when they get outside. It was just about the ass, the women she is always have, have, have no hair cover. And now, what he saw, he saw her, he recognized her from her ass. What the women she was doing, the women she went out at night to do poo poo. What Omar, he said to her, Omar, at the dark, he said, we recognize you, Sauda. So what do you can see at night? Hair, black hair? They, those, they have a black hair. What you can recognize? Nothing. And in dark night, I mean, there's no way you can see the hair. So what he saw? He saw the shiny skin. He saw the flesh. He saw, he saw her ass. So the verse about the, the hijab came because of the ass specifically because Omar, he insists, and Omar, he told Muhammad many times that you should let your wife cover. This is why if you go in the Hadith, you say, you see Omar, he's saying, let us see if we can find you. Uh, what Omar said, here we go. Let us see here, it says, uh, 
Please read carefully with me. All the reason behind the hijab, it was the bikini. All what Muhammad Allah want is Muslim women to cover in their ass. As simple as that. And it was specifically about the wives of Muhammad. Here, Omar, he said, my Lord agreed with me in three things. By the way, they are three. I can show you different hadith where, where Omar, he said, uh, some Muslim, they say seven. Some Muslim, they say ten things, which mean Allah, he took from Omar Quran. I said, oh my, oh, oh Allah messenger, I wish we took the station of Abraham as our praying place. So the one who made the Kaaba a holy place for prayer, it was Omar. And Allah, he sent the verse as Omar said, exactly as he said, imagine. And then, so that came the divine inspiration and take you people the station of Abraham as a place of prayer. Okay, and then he continued. So the Kaaba is a holy place now because of Omar. Omar obviously is a prophet of Allah too. As regard the verses of varying the women, I said, O oh Allah Messenger, I wish you order your wives to cover to cover themselves from men because good and bad talks to them. But who is the bad and the good? It's him. He is the one who's making fun of Sauda she when he, when when she was exposing her ass. So the verse of varying of the women was revealed. Now we continue. Once, wife, once the wives of, of the Prophet made a united front against the Prophet, and I said to them, it may be if he, the Prophet, divorce you, you all, uh, 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 that his Lord will give you, uh, give him instead of you wives better than you. And then he says, and so the verse came, same as I had said, exactly. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us, can you make Quran like, like the Quran? Are you stupid or what? Is don't don't you see that Omar he is the one is making Quran and Allah is copying Omar? As I said. So Omar here counting how many things he said and Muhammad he took it as it is and he make it Quran as I said word by word. Letter by letter. So why people are angry from Harun Yah for for uh, taking. Uh, uh, dancing with those women having sex with those women Islam is a sexual religion it's an open mind community not as people they think that Islam is really uh, uh, like uh, uh, Islam is a very open-minded religion when it comes to sex all what you need to do is just do it according to the Islamic Sharia law you want to rent women for sex go ahead bring your money and your honey and then you are ready to go you go to her father, you pay him some money, he deliver you the goat, you take the goat with you home, you sleep with her. If you don't like her, you can return her. As simple as that, just do it according to the Islamic law. You can have four goats in the same time. Actually, even though, and by the way, somebody might say to me, you are offending women, you are saying goats. My friend, no. The Quran, is according to Islam, women are goats. If we go here in the Quran, we will find the Quran is speaking about women as goats. Here we go. This is my brother. He have 99 goat. And I have one goat. <laughs> Who are they, those 99 goats? You think they are goats? No, they are women. They are women. Chapter 38, verse number 24. So Islam consider women as a goat and you can milk this goat anytime anywhere you wish as you see here In different verse in the Quran In different verse in the Quran the Quran even says that women are the same as the ground You can dig in the ground as you wish which means you can have sexual relationship with them from the front or the back It doesn't matter Here we go Harthun lakum We go here. Nisa'akum harthun lakum fa'atun harthukum anna shi'tum. What is the purpose of this? Some of the Jews, they were saying that if you have sex with your wife from behind, and you know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to go in details, your son will be came or he, have a, he will have a cross eyes. Muhammad, he don't like this idea. He like you know, he have no problem with them to have sex with from behind. So he said, "Nisa'akum harthun lakum." Your wives is the same as the earth. You can have you can dig in the earth as you wish from the front, from the back. Who care? Just do it. Have fun. So the Quran everywhere speaking of women either as a goat or is at the ground. 
anytime, anywhere you can, you wish, you can have dig and have sex. And here, the the Muslim man, he is the same as a as a uh, uh, as a, like a buffalo, and the woman, she is the female buffalo, or let's say she is the ground. You want to dig in the ground if you want to use a buffalo to for farming. This is how Muhammad described the Quran, described the women, and then in the same time, you will see Muhammad abusing the women more and more and he is making them as a sexual object all over the Quran never stop as an example Muhammad in the hadith not only let's go to the hadith now he said uh, if a woman he refused to come to the bed of her husband the angels will curse her all night until she open her legs to him I mean, what kind of religion this religion is? Obviously, this is a very sexual religion. The point of this story, Muhammad is scaring the hell of the women, saying to them, hey, that you, you better be careful. To be a Muslim and to make Allah happy with you, you have to open your legs 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days. Otherwise, Allah will unleash his angels, which look like they are dogs, and they will bite you and they will curse you non-stop. Otherwise, why a man... Muhammad don't say the same about him. What if a man refused to sleep with his wife? There's no punishment and there's no penalty. Actually, Muhammad, he himself, he did the same with, with Sauda. If you go in the Quran, you will find Muhammad saying the following. The word Nishuz, Nishuz, appear in the Quran twice. At least about women. Al-Rijal qawwamuna ala nisa'i bimma fadlallahu ba'dahum ala ba'd. Okay. The men are in charge of women. Let us show you that. So here you will see the word And those who are afraid of their, uh, let us say, not being good with you in like uh, somehow they are not really happy with you. So what do you do? It says you, uh, you know, you school them and then, you know, you don't stop having sex with them. And you beat them, you choose anyone you want. The Muslim they lie, they say in the translation, first you school them, second, there's no second, there's no first. It says, do this and this and this. However, it says you can scourge them and beat the hell of them. The Muslim they lie to us and they say, no, this is about light beating. This is a big fat lie. We can show you the hadith where a woman, her husband did beat her until her skin became greener than her clothes. Now we notice here, that the word here it says if you if you if you remember we mentioned the word nishuth which is the word the Arabic word if we if we read here in translation it says and as, uh, uh, so good women are obedience all right and then he says as for those whom you fear rebellion so the word nishuth translated as rebellion okay we go to the Quran back again and we research for the same word nishuth we will find that Muhammad he was in his shoes too. What does that mean? Muhammad in this chapter in front of us, he stopped having sex with Sauda. Chapter 4, verse number 128. Now, why Sauda cannot beat Muhammad? Why if the woman she is in the shoes, we can beat her? But if a man he is in the shoes, we cannot beat him? For a very simple reason, he's a man. Are you an idiot or what? We beat the weak one, not the strong one. And now Muhammad is being in the shoes. He is not sleeping with his wife. So what we would do? Muhammad, he made a verse to fit with his new shoes for he is being rebellion against his women. He didn't want to sleep with them. And why he stopped sleeping with the, with the, with the Sauda? Simply because she became old. And he don't like old women. He like young, fresh, like Aisha. So if a woman fears ill treatment from her husband or distortion, huh? uh, uh, it is no sin for them to uh, make an agreement. Okay, what sin? What agreement? How come the man, he can be ill in treatment with his wife and the women cannot beat him? But if the woman, she is ill in treatment with the husband, the husband can beat her. This is simply, if you go and see the interpretation of this verse, you will see that this is about him. Stop sleeping with Sauda. And then they made an agreement according to Aisha. Aisha, she told Muhammad, don't divorce her. Don't divorce her. She promised me if you don't divorce her, she will give her day to me because Muhammad, he gave day for every woman and he have many. Now he will get the chance to sleep with Aisha twice a week because the wives are fighting over the big goat, Muhammad. So if we go in the hadith, we will find that so that story is what happened, that she was afraid.
from being thrown in the street, being homeless, and now she is old. So what she can do, she cannot afford to make a living. He married her when she was young, and now he want to dump her, as usual. As usual, Muslim do. They marry you when you are young and beautiful, and the second you get some wrinkles, they exchange you with a brand new wife. Uh, and here, actually, let me go back here. Look at this. Once Saudi bin Tuzama went out at night for some needs, and some needs she want to do poo poo. This is exactly the topic we are talking about, about the hijab. And then he told her, Omar, he saw, he said, We recognize her. Hello, you cannot, you cannot hide yourself. And then he told Muhammad, Hey, by the way, hey, I mentioned to you to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to order your wife to be cover man i mean we are making fun of them so then divine inspiration after many time omar repeating the same request to muhammad came as omar he said and now if we go to the divorce we can find the hadith uh here we go it's, so when so the to them i grow old she gave her day to aisha but she did not give her day willingly she gave her day because she heard that muhammad is going to divorce her this is the truth this is the truth. All right. Here we go. Read with me carefully. Uh, all those hadiths saying the same story. Look. So that she been forced to give her day to, to, to Aisha as a deal. So Muhammad will not divorce her. All those hadith. And this is here again the story of Aw Sauda uh, doing Pupu and Omar again. He is making fun of her ass. Yeah. Anyway, so the, the the story, the Muslims, they are make a big fuss about it and making a big deal about it. This is an, a very Islamic practice. And what Omar Oktar or Adnan Oktar, sorry, he did or he said it is very Islamic and you have no excuse. It's very Islamic. Actually, I respect him one million times more than Muhammad. There's no proof until now that he is forcing anyone. They say that he is, look look at the hypocrisy of the Muslims, that he is using girls and their age. Uh, why the Muslims don't take Muhammad to court in Turkey then? How come Muhammad, he can sleep with six years old girl, but Adnan Oktar cannot? It's a political game. This guy is a scumbag all his life. He is the same as Muhammad. But now because he spoke against Erdogan, he is taking side with Golan, the master of Erdogan, the one who made him president. So because he did that, Erdogan, he seek revenge. And now he start digging under the ground to find any excuse to arrest this man. And that's why he's arrested. Why he's not arrested all those years under Erdogan? Erdogan is a president for the, for, uh, or in government is for what? For the last 15 years now? Erdogan, he did not see his TV. He did not see the women dancing naked around him. He did not see the bikini yet. He never complained. Because all those years, this guy was supporting Erdogan. And today he's not because of that. So we put him in jail. We accuse him of anything. And he is, we know we can find tons of things. Suddenly he is not Islamic. Yesterday he was a hero. He was amazing Muslim. The Muslims are praising him as everywhere, as you see in, in, in YouTube. Go and watch this, uh, this video here as an example. This video here. Yusuf State is speaking about Harun Yahya. Speaking highly of him, the Muslims six years ago did not see that Harun Yahya have girls dancing in his nightclub, in his yacht, in his villa. They saw it. They knew about it. So he was a hero yesterday. He is a scumbag today. This is this is a pure hypocrisy of Islam. So I want Muslims to be honest, if they can, at least for one day. This guy is better than your prophet, and really, I respect him. I mean, I respect him at least better than Muhammad. And actually, I don't know why he. Did, uh, I would like to have a debate with him when those girls are there. I mean, look at me. Look at me. I debate who? I debate uh, people who have a long beard. I mean, and, uh, 
You know, I mean, they want to debate someone like this. I go there, we will have a very nice debate. We will have vodka in front of us. We will have, uh, he's, he said that what is forbidden in Islam is only the wine. And look at me, I don't drink wine, I drink vodka. I mean, this is halal. So we will have debate, me and Adnan Oktar, and we will take a break, and the break we will get somebody dancers. We're in, we're in a skirt, you can see the panties even without sitting down. I mean, this is amazing, so beautiful. You feel like you are in the heaven of Allah and all those women in his show, they have a plastic surgery for their breast, for their lips. Oh, look at those lips. I mean, those are lips. Look at this woman here, the blondie, the blondie one. Her lips and her breast is coming out like a cow. Almost she is going to explode. And really you feel like you want to convert to Islam after you, you watch it. This guy is doing the right thing. And look here next to this girl here. You see, here we go. I don't know. This is vodka. What is that? I'm not expert with a drink. He said he don't have wine. I don't know. This is look wine here. This doesn't look wine. I'm not really expert with drink. Like I'm not a drinking person. I like uh, I drink uh, beer maybe once every six months if I drink it. You know. Uh, very beautiful. Very beautiful. Amazing. You know. Not like me. Look at me. The ones who they are watching my show is all of them. They are ugly like me. I mean, I'm speaking about the men now, huh? I mean, look at this guy. He have a, a handsome women, uh, sorry, handsome men, beautiful women. I mean, look at this. This is so beautiful. And if you have such a, uh, uh, like such a people, uh, you know, in your show, I mean, you can imagine how many people will watch your, your video. Look at this. Not a single one of them, she is not blonde. Everybody in the stage is a blonde. That's amazing, so beautiful. But you know what I can do? I mean, people are jealous. Like this guy is lucky. He have all what he needed. Look at the belly dancer. Look at this. I mean, this is so beautiful. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna do that. I'm going to convert to Islam, and I'm going to join uh, uh, Adnan uh, uh, Oktar or uh, uh, yeah, Adnan Oktar uh, team. I'm drinking some coffee, guys. Anyone want some? Be honest. Be honest with me. Huh? You are all brainwashed by CP. Why are you brainwashed by CP? Why CP? He promised them vagina in heaven, Abdul. I mean, look at look at the Abdul saying in the text. I you are brainwashed by me. Why? Have you ever heard me saying if you if you listen to me, I will give you versions. 72 versions, 80,000 versions, gold and silver, clothes made from silk. What's wrong with you? I am the one who brainwashed people or it's your religion. I am the one who promised them young boys who will go naked around them and they are very white and they will not bleed. What brainwash, Abdul? Come on, be honest. Be honest. Oh, I forgot you are Abdul. You cannot be honest. Have a tea? No, no, I am having a coffee, you know, because uh, I need I need coffee. You know, I'm not. Uh, <coughs> uh, you see, after you watch this, you feel like you need coffee. I mean, you need to get awake, and I need to change the way I do do my things. Arun Yahya, he wrote all kind of books to bring people to Islam, amazing books, and. I know now why he is inspired. You know, for me to write a book, it takes me a long time. Adnan, Harun, you do not need too much time. Look at those blonde girls around him. You know, you are writing at the table a book about Allah. And there is a girl, she is giving massage to your feet. One, she is giving massage to your shoulder. And the other one, she is doing belly dancer for you, belly dancing. I mean, everything is refreshing around you. And all of them, they are blonde hair. All of them, their lips is coming out. All of them, their breast is going to explode. I mean, what do you want more in life? That's it. This is a gift from Allah, my friend. And this guy is doing great job for Islam. Hypocrisy is so amazing in the Islamic religion. Now they remember that this guy is not a good person. Suddenly. His videos, he's not even hiding it. You know, this guy, he do live show. Every week, he do live show where people see him in YouTube. He don't hide it. 
it's like it's not like something you're surprised about like this guy he was not saying what he do and suddenly coming out you know what this guy he do with life in the front of you and you see the girls with him he have the drink in his table he is not hiding he is he is not hypocrite the same as the muslims he is he is really not hypocrite like them yes he lie about what called quran and science yes yes blah 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 but when it's come to his show he is very truthful Muhammad, he used to have girls dancing for him, black slaves, Ethiopian slaves, dancing for Muhammad. What's wrong? Your, your prophet used to do that. He cannot do that? I advise you Muslims to be really more truthful and stop your hypocrisy and respect Islamic religion, Allah teaching, you know, uh, look like we don't have many people watching I don't know why maybe because we did not uh, invite many uh, I don't know but anyway I just I wanted to share this with you and this video will not stay really long in my in my channel so I advise you please to download it as soon as we finish our broadcast and share it with your friends the whole point of this video to expose the hypocrisy of Muslims when they speak of that this guy is not being Islamic Islamic Islam is an open sex religion. All what you need to do is follow the sexual rules of Muhammad. As simple as that. In case you do not know, according to Islam, you can marry and divorce unlimited numbers in the same day. In the same day, there is no limit. You can have four wives in the same time. And you call them wives, but the fact they are hookers, they are getting paid wages for sex. You pay the women, she go to bed, you sleep with her, you divorce her. You can have four in the same time. Let us say now it is, let us say in your time, it is 7 p.m. Or maybe 12 p.m. So 12 p.m. I marry four. I want to divorce those four. 12.30. It's halal. And I will have sex with the new four wives. There is no limit. It's an open sexual religion. There is no limitation. The, the the only limitation is how many in the same time four I mean, who, who, who want more than four in the same time i mean can you even sleep with four in the same time you must be like muhammad a hero so everything he is doing is islamic muhammad he have 13 wives why muhammad can have 13 wives i mean it's not even fair hypocrisy he have unlimited numbers of uh, of slaves Women, they give themselves to the Prophet, so why he cannot? So everything we see around us from the Muslim society is hypocrisy. They claim that they are religion of dignity. They cover themselves when the fact the Quran did not speak of that. And you can go right now, we can search. You will find tons of articles, including Al-Azhar University. I can show you the fatwa from Al-Azhar University saying that hijab is not obligation for Muslim women to cover themselves the way the Muslim to, they do today. So what the hijab, they say the hijab is a tradition, is not from the religion. What the hijab was is the bikini because Sauda was exposing her ass. She go in the middle of the way and then she take off her panty and that time she didn't wear panty. She lift up her dress and Omar was staring at her ass. This is the hijab. He want them to put down their clothes even when they do their poo, -poo. They want them not to expose their breast. So cover your breast. There is nowhere the hijab is mentioned to cover their hair. If you want to speak with the wife's prophet, because Muhammad, he was so jealous, he made a verse about it. Speak to them from behind a hijab. What this is a wall. This is not a hijab or, 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 a, or a sheet. Speak to them from behind the door. This is about the wives of Muhammad. So everything the Muslims they come with today is far away from what is called Islamic. And always I wonder, I mean, if you are a Muslim and you are listening, why Muslims cannot see what we see? I mean, what is the problem? Isn't it clear for you that this is very Islamic? Muhammad, he used to advise people, teach them how to make wine. He used to drunk at least four days a week. He was a drunk man. The Muslims, even the Quran to the point, the Quran mentioned that the Muslims, they used to go to pray in the Kaaba and they are totally drunk. If you go here, it says, don't get close to the prayer when you are drunk. Allah speaking to whom? To the believers. 
Read with me carefully. Chapter 4, verse number 43. Read it, my friend. Read it. This is Islam. Muslims, the, is, is, Muslims are a drunk society. Or who you believe approach not the prayer when you are drunk. What happened? The Muslims, they go inside the mosque. And well, the reason for this verse, actually, not because Muhammad is against drinking, but the, 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 the Christians, the Jews, uh, whatever who knows is, is not about or let's say the Nasara, not the Christians, that the one, the cult, people they start talking about this funny believers when they are praying to their God, they fail apart when they are praying. They are drunk. So people start making fun of them. So Muhammad he had to make a verse says, please, 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 for the sake of Allah, don't approach the prayer when you are drunk. And the Muslim they say to you, at that time. Drinking was not forbidden. Aha, uh -huh. why? They say to you, Islam came by steps. So in the beginning, we fool them. We tell them a drinking is okay, is halal. Then we say to them, don't pray when you are drinking. Then after we became stronger, we force them not to drink. Well, this is a cheating. It's a scam. When you sign into agreement, you should say to me, what is in this agreement? You don't make an abrogation agreement later and screw the deal. The guy who converted to Islam and he is a person who like to drink. Now what he would do? Oh, we would beat the hell of him. And Muhammad, he come with no drinking method because he cannot drink. When he got sick because of the poison, he throw up everything he eat. Muhammad, he got jealous. Everybody's drinking except him. So he said, nobody drink from now. This is Islam. And this is the truth. It's a drunk society. It's a sexual society. It's a sex society. It's about unlimited sexual contract. Marriage does not exist. The word nukah, we showed you many times that the word nukah means simply the F contract. As simple as that. And this is in Islamic websites, as we showed you. You can so see our previous videos. So where is the marriage and where is the dignity and where is... The, so they try to present to you that Muslim women, they have to wear the hijab because our women, they are highly respected. No, my friend, Muslim men today, they force women to wear hijab because they like to own them and they use religion to control them. Women is a property. You spend your money in her so now she is owned by you. This is what Quran chapter 4, verse number 34. If you go in chapter uh, verse number 34, the same verse we, chapter we are reading from, read with me. Men are protectors of uh, and maintainers of women because Allah giving them more strength than others and because they support them with their means. So why they are in charge, why they are in control? Because they spend money on them. The one who spent money in the goat, he got the milk. This is Quran. This is not my interpretation. You can change the translation. Maybe you don't like this translation, my friend. Read. Go. Like, what do you want? Yusuf Ali, Shakir, what do you want? It doesn't matter. All of them is the same garbage. Women are in under the, the, the feet of Muslim men because simply they are spending out their money on them. Who is saying that? It's your God. This is the excuse. Women, they are abused because they need money. We need to spend on them and we spend on them that, that will give us the right to beat the hell of them and beat them. <laughs> Why are we are allowed to beat them? Because we spend money on them. Like, are you, are you deaf? Are you blind? Adnan Oktar is not beating those women. He spent money on them. So what is unlawful he did? All is very pure and Islamic. Stop your hypocrisy and stop being a foolish person and admit the truth that this is your cult and this is your religion. And with this, I want to say thank you guys for being here. Please download this video. I'm not going to keep it long in my channel. Spread it around and let everybody see the truth about this cult. That hijab is nothing really but a bikini. And this is the truth. Bikini is the Islamic veil. Anything else is a false teaching. The truth, when you say it, it hurt. And Adnan Oktar, he said the truth. And this is why now they are all over him.
for they did not hear this before. Why? Because it's a hypocrisy society. Thank you very much for watching. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget, if you'd like to read my books, you can go to Amazon.com and you can search for Christian Prince. And we appreciate those people who make support and donation. And you will find the link underneath of the video if you'd like to do so. Christ is Lord and Islam is false. I mean to that. See you soon. Bye-bye.